Thank you so much, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to share with you. Number two, what are the what are the government's existing government hurdles? And number three, uh, what are the uh, labor manpower components uh, to increase jobs and opportunities? Yeah. Sorry, for you. I, I missed the first one because I was sitting back. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I am Vice Chairman of this association. 
I'm willing to stake my reputation with the hemp industry. So that's I'm putting my balls on the line. <laughs> Just two things I'd like to point out. One is the social communications, I think, you know, because they confuse hemp with marijuana. I think that's can easily be heard of. You just have to come up with the communications plan. But for me, the challenge with the communications plan is to develop a brand like Jolly B. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask, perhaps we must, with the president here before he leaves, perhaps come up with a policy when we refer. Because if we have Jolly B, perhaps we can have mop hemp. If there used to be Manila hemp, there can be mop hemp. Okay? But the second point I'd like to bring out is for me more important. Really, it's the government connect. If you don't have the government connect, I'm afraid you might be the first mover that loses out. Microsoft was not the first mover. There were others. Okay. I'm happy to hear that uh, you know, someone is linked to GMA. That's very powerful. I'm also happy to have here Tony Block of Floor. Can you raise your hand, Tony? He used to be head of the IPR office, intellectual property rights. I think the making it legal is not that frightening. It's only a matter of time and uh, you know connections. How will you protect yourselves? And when you ask your fee, please have us call right. Okay. That's right. Uh, when you have an arrangement with the Tony Block of Floor, please give something for Mark ABC. <laughs> I, I don't want to go into details, but you mentioned some 700 to 1,000 hectares of the like. I can link you up there. Finally, I think two points, two final points. In the discussion on the human benefits for the health, I did not see something on sex. You may want to consider it. And finally, I think, Abe, you have the most important success factor, Abe. You're married to a Filipina. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, Mr. Commissioner, maybe uh, we can try to craft uh, an advocacy. Yeah. 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 No? Maybe form formalize it and uh, publicize it. If that's, if that's okay with you. Okay. Yeah. Let's formalize that. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 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 From what you said earlier, I assume that you have a choice between seed production and fiber production, but you can't get both at the same time. Is that correct? So there would be different economic returns for seed or for that would depend on the market. Do you know roughly what percentage is likely to be? So I mean, really what that's going to have a lot to do with is um, the prices on the market at that time. You know, but the bottom line is you can you can buy hemp biomass and, and global prices right now are anywhere from five to fifteen dollars per pound to US. Uh, but seed, hemp uh, kind of seed, there's much more money in the seeds depending on the seed quality. And so you know, I, I think that uh, hopefully you can focus on both parts and uh, allocate different land and resources and research for that. Okay, right. Just a simple one question. What is the soil condition? Okay, the most favorable. Sorry, the soil condition. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But one of the things that uh, we need to do first, once we have the license, is to actually do research on what strain would work with soil in the Philippines. Um, but hemp. Um, plant uh, will need a well well uh, defined drainage system because it's it's not uh, I would say that uh, um, heavily um, heavily heavily watered uh, or heavily wet soil is is not ideal. So the way the plantation will have to be engineered is that drainage will be uh, will be uh, optimized. Is that why you were in Talita? Because uh, that has very really nice work. Very nice work. But uh, since we're looking at uh, economic zones, uh, we'd like to analyze the uh, soil first there. Uh, 
and see what would be the best the best uh, strain yeah. that would be like, I, I asked what type of soil is the best definitely classification uh, what is really required for the soil to be growing well it's a thing to the forest also thing to you can plant in the trees wherever you want but somewhere they grow in some way not and there is the best yeah, so I mean, our understanding is, I mean, and none of us are agricultural technologists or growing experts, which is why we have acquired a master grower uh, who's our, our vice president uh, in uh, Canada Pacific. But, uh, you know, you need a pH level of about 6 to 7.5. You need well aerated soil. And, and it can't be, uh, like Fernando said, it needs to be relatively dry. And, uh, and, and yet, uh, what we've been told is that much of the same uh, areas where you can grow coconuts in the Philippines would be perfect for hemp. And so there doesn't appear to be any concern. But hemp is a very resilient crop, as I said earlier. And so it, it's, it's not a concern, actually, you could likely get 2.5 growing cycles a year in the Philippines. Whereas in Canada, uh, you know, a lot of the United States, maybe 1.5. One, one are you suggesting an interacting with coconut? Well, that's certainly an option. Again, this is where you need the agricultural researchers to make uh, some of those determinations along with our master grower. Uh, because, you know, and again, that's where we've looked at the fusion of sort of uh, what's happened in the West along with the experts who are already on the ground here in the Philippines. Maybe you just want to live coconut industry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Coconut wine, perhaps. Let's okay. see. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just three quick points. There's no problem with the legal framework. Um, what is the problem is the enforcement side. Um, my last environment was head of the Electoral Property Office, but I was also on the Secretary of Defense and Justice, and I know there's something wrong in the enforcement side. So I think instead of dreaming of getting a law passed addressing this, you're better off addressing the enforcers. Because if they will see the slides, the two slides that you made the difference between marijuana and hemp, they immediately was enough. I think that's the first step. The second one, the members here recall, I had a lecture three years ago on uh, intellectual property. You're, you're fully protected by intellectual property in the Philippines. So in fact, we have a special law, plant variety. Awesome. You bring in the seeds, you register it, you breed the seeds here, you'll be more than protected. That's, that's my second point. You have more than enough protection. The third point is, I know to, to many, most of agricultural activity is really machines. And unfortunately in the Philippines, there are very, very few inventions and machines, mostly utility models. I think that's an area where you can get into. Remember, I could hardly think of maybe a few German very few Americans, very few other Europeans filing patent in the Philippines in agricultural machines. If you file that, you might be able to protect it in the Philippines and nobody else will come in. They could no longer come in if they are not registered in the Philippines. So for, for agricultural machines, I think that is your better future. Mm -hmm. Because the, you can grow here all over the Philippines. The problem of industrial production is basically based on vehicle. And it's hit by 20 typhoons every year. So if you can be able to grow enough seeds, breed enough seeds to cultivate all over the Philippines, you're better off patenting the seeds and at the same time patenting the utility models. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Sir, just to, just to comment on that, I think uh, you, bring, you brought up a very good point. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the industrial hemp sector global is, uh, there's a lot of research being conducted right now, but they have just scratched the surface. Because this is a brand new sector and it's a phenomenon. People are still researching a lot. So um, when we develop certain strains, I'm glad to hear that we can be protected and that the IP law over here. Now, the second thing is the seed, as you mentioned, because uh, I'm not sure if a lot of people know, but China has uh, uh, are producing a lot of hemp uh, right now, actually one of the biggest producers. Uh, the seed, the good quality seed are actually in demand worldwide. So if we could pop into a seat, that would be fantastic. So thank you very much. And just one question for you. Uh, can we have your business card? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we are <laughs> 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 <laughs>
okay. Now, how, how long is it? What's the shelf life of your end product? I'm sorry? The shelf life. Shelf life. It, it all depends on which, which product. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, I mean, once it's bailed as biomass, I mean, it's my understanding is, you know, it'll, it'll sit three or four years and it's 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 properly cared for. Now, the CBD oil, same thing. So, essentially, you're extracting the CBD oil, I mean, from the leaves and some from the roots, and uh, as long as it's stored properly, it, it will last for forever. And our intention would be to make sure that we're compliant with the regulations out of the European Union, mm -hmm. who are, uh, of course, uh, the most advanced. And once um, we're compliant there, then the export capacity is pretty much global. Mm -hmm. You know, we had uh, we had a member here uh, who passed away last year, and when, his, uh, when he was in his pros, he, uh, he had uh, uh, open access to to, to the oil. I understand though that oil is still illegal. Is that right? Well, uh, under, 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 under. The, the hemp oil, you mean yeah. the CBD oil? Yeah. It's, in Canada, it's completely illegal. Yeah, so, so it's still under uh, schedule. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, in the Philippines, it's yeah. not legal. Yeah. In yeah. fact, when we arrived here, they were asking us if we brought in some stuff yeah. from Canada. Because <laughs> there's a legal one. Well, they asked It's available on the market. market. <laughs> it's available on the market. It it black market. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if you go to stores in Canada, the United States, uh, yeah. England, uh, much of Europe, I mean, there is yes. there are okay. five products sure. everywhere, okay. from protein powder to, to granola bars to I mean, it's just amazing. Right. Yeah. Okay, but, but the one that's a bit black market is that produced here or is that important? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. Okay. Our, our question would be: uh, Are there countries where marijuana is illegal? Do they have industrial hemp plantation? Well, they, because you cannot tell the difference between industrial hemp and marijuana, except for the height. The, the tree and the leaves appear to be exactly the same. Is that correct? The, therefore, from the enforcer's point of view, they cannot tell the difference between the illegal marijuana and the legal yeah. industrial You know, hemp. They, they, there's uh, many ways to tell the difference. It's not just the size of plants, but also the, the actual look of the leaves. The leaves themselves look quite a bit different. And, uh, you know, to be honest, to get medical grade cannabis, you need to often grow it indoors in a facility. So what you have to do is spend some time educating the people who are in, in responsible for enforcement so that they understand the difference. But like Fernando said, we have a huge allocation in our budget towards security. And hence part of our strategy in working with in, economic zones here in the Philippines is that they already have a higher level of security then. And that would be a starting point so that the government could see that this is actually safe. Is this something that we're not going to do as a pioneering effort? Are there countries already where marijuana is illegal and yet there are industrial companies? Yeah. So that's exactly what happened in Canada. So our, our legalization process, and I think in much of Europe, was, was staged. So what that means is for years, hemp was legal. You needed certain permits in order to grow it, and government inspectors who would come. And what they're testing for, and this is the critical difference, is just one thing, and it's the THC content. So how much THC? So you start with hemp, and then you go to medical cannabis, which is essentially much lower THC, but still uh, more than hemp. And then the third step is recreational. Uh, cannabis, which is what Canada and most of Europe has now pretty much fully legalized. So there's many examples of countries that start with them. You, you mentioned countries that are fairly well developed or advanced economies, where the institutions are very strong. How about uh, third world countries, where the institutions are weak, subject to corruption? Well, I mean, there's a great experiment underway right now in Thailand which uh, I, I wouldn't say that it's quite a third world country, but similar economic profile to the Philippines. And so what they have done is they have allowed and legalized for hemp and also for medical cannabis, uh, also some recreational, but it's they're rolling it out in stages. And so there's some learnings there, but as you know, uh, once one ASEAN country goes down that road, it's not long often before the others will follow. And um, just to add on to that, and this is where we believe um, when, uh, learning from other people's mistakes. Um, certainly in Canada, the, uh, before the complete legalization for cannabis, one of the biggest issues was security. 
And of course, the security issue and concern is very big in the Philippines, considering that there's a current drug war. Um, so with that in mind, with learning all of the infrastructure of the, the Western uh, or the, of the first world country, knowing what works and what doesn't work, we can now take this information and implement it into a developing country like the Philippines and bring that to the regulators and legislators. Because one of their biggest concerns really is security and leakage. Right? How can you assure that um, the industrial hunt you're growing will be secured and there will be no leakage? And we have the security platform for proposals to the legislators that works in North America. Okay. Yes. Just three quick points. One, uh, are you looking at production at industrial level or do you also look at small farmers? If it's less than industrial level, are you looking at say you're able to link to small farmers? Are you looking at the sport, small farmers just doing the raw material or they, can they also be involved in processing in so many steps? That's one. Number two, a very concrete proposal at this stage, uh, the one beside me is who left is Marilu Estrada. She said she would really like to bring this to Ilocos Norte. So you have a connection in Cagayan. We're now telling you through MAP ABCDF, we'd like to bring you to Ilocos Norte. Okay. Number three, I think when we talk about government relations, we didn't have to think of it in terms of PPP. Not so much in financing, but financing also involved with it. Helping government craft the government interaction with the hemp industry. I think that is the generic thing there. Uh, the president used to be USEC in DTI and he meets with it our monthly. Perhaps on the DAN, we can help come in also. But I think it's also in the enforcement. I don't know if it's PNP or Department of Defense or both. Okay. So those are three things. One, processing for the small producer. Then we already would like to bring in Locos Norte. So you have the whole northern Luzon, Cagayan and Locos Norte, and really craft this as a PPP. And I think once you're able to solve the government side, you can get rolling. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir, for, for that. Uh, just, a comment, just a question, PPP is public private partnership. Yes. Okay. So if, uh, if a PPP is... <laughs> <laughs> would be uh, would be a way forward. Uh, ABC would be interested in, in partnering as well. Sure yes. Thank you. <laughs> Summary is this. Please 
prepare for a meeting with some people here. Uh, four pages, right? Which is basically the cash flow market the risks, right? And we can start our conversation very fast. Now, uh, our vice chairman of Lots of Farmers, my chairman talked about intercropping. All those things are interesting. But my chairman said important things the cash flow. <laughs> okay, we also have uh, opportunities for the land bank. The land bank present is the worst for me. It is a goal that is too fantastic. It's kind of know the number of partners, right? She cannot do it actually. It's too ambitious, but the president is registered in the state of Malaysia. It's kind of Malaysia. Did you hear that? And so I talked to her, and uh, she's hungry for good projects, but good projects uh, don't come from small farmers. It's only about that one. They come from people like me. And as my chairman said, let's see the cash flow. Right? Okay. Um, so, so that's it. I'm very blessed that you're here because you know, you're going to be probably the most expensive. So, so we can do that. Okay? Because the maneuvering that we talked about uh, is going to be very important. Social intelligence is more important than the fitness and analytical of creative intelligence, right? Better do that stuff. But, but we can handle numbers. The chairman said, so, yes, that are the street. So if I just speak to that, you know, we've, we've, we've done a lot of work on that. And uh, of course, we have all of that documentation available. So if, you know, but of course, it's somewhat confidential information because we have a fully constant business plan and lots of projections, both uh, pulling on experts in North America along with the Philippines. Um, and so if you're interested in that, then please grab one of our cards, any one of us, and uh, send us an email. And uh, yeah, we probably ask for you to sign a non-disclosure agreement so that we can ensure that we're okay. having a, but we would love to have that conversation. Did you marry the Philippine who knows ID by Yes. Let's make a date, right? Yeah. One month from now, yeah. uh, you'll meet some of us, okay? And our objective is not to make money. You see, we are we kind of old, and therefore, psychic income supports us. But we do, and psychic income for us is to create jobs and make it fly. Uh, but you cannot do that with small farm. You gotta do it with financial businesses like him, etc. And so we gotta do that. Uh, but you know, we kind of don't wanna do small time. We wanna have spread, right? We cannot waste our time on small projects. It's got to be projects with spread and strategies. Okay? So, do you, have, do you accept or not? One month from now, I don't need to be the right, but I need to be the <laughs> And you got to give me the, the basics. And it's not disclosure stuff, I understand that. But I'm just saying, we needed the scoping done, you know? We need the payback, ROI, so we need I, the scoping done. I'm not sure if we can commit to one month, but we are just discussing. We are planning in, uh, in two to three months to be back. And maybe perhaps through the, the chairman, uh, what we could do is uh, send out a note, uh, obviously, and then for anyone who would be interested in that further conversation. So okay. I would commit uh, for sure within the next two to three months. How does that sound? Okay. Yes, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm just very glad. Apologies. Good morning. Um, I'm very glad that finally the hemp is here. I've been doing a lot of research before. I even went to Reno, Nevada, Nevada on the farms over there. We have a company over there who are already growing the strains, seeds. So now my partner and my associate here, Mr. Dan Barrett, were also trying to collaborate with other um, companies and farmers and how we can bring this in the Philippines. So, because you mentioned earlier, like in, one, in Northern Nevada Sustainable Company, they already are, we're growing there. They have already seeds. And they, depending on the strain, as you stated earlier, it depends on what particular product you want to, you know, um, to make out of that particular strain. But the problem now here, I think I will address my question to our legal um, advisor here, our, um, a third um, lawyer. How can we bring it here in the Philippines? Like we have seeds ready to grow, and I even asked my friend, "Can just stick it in your land so I can start growing now, and then we can show what this product can give to our country and our farmers." And for sure, it will be a game changer in our economy. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just comment on that. 
that it, I think it's been proven that it is less harmful than, say, cigarettes. I'm talking about one. Cigarettes or, or alcohol. Uh, and uh, if you just do that further, make marijuana uh, available to recreate, in the recreation, which sort of problem the fever flow would, would, would proceed, right? Yes, yeah, sir, just to comment on that quickly. Um, we were just in Las Vegas a few uh, weeks ago. Right now in Nevada, they're actually developing cigarettes with zero nicotine and 100% CBD. Um, so for people that doesn't want to uh, continue smoking, they can revert back to the CBD cigarettes. Um, now, uh, one thing to address, sir, with your comment and uh, Sir Cesar, um, I truly agree. You know, at the end of the day, the cannabis effect is a business. Um, however, we also believe in social economics, right? I've been in the finance industry for 18 years, and I've worked with many, many multi-millionaires, and let me tell you, here's what I've learned in 18 years of finance. Being wealthy and being fulfilled are two separate things, right? You can be wealthy and you don't, you're don't, you not fulfilled. And for us, when we developed this sector and we started employing thousands upon thousands of farmers, Filipinos, to us, it's actually fulfilling. Right? And just to answer your question, sir, you mentioned are we growing for uh, commercial or with, even with small farmers? Both. Uh, at the end of the day, the box stops at the dangerous drug board. Right? And uh, what we need to do is we need to measure what matters. And what matters right now is to have the proper documentation. Right? So, thank you. Uh, thank you. The, the question is, uh, is industrial hemp legal in the Philippines? Yes, it's already here. As a matter of fact, there's a small company down in the south, one small Filipino company that practically sustained the entire Japanese economy. They were building the binders that would bind the currency notes of Japan. As you know, ilapat, 5,000 yen, they're very big. You need binders. And these binders came from Kalugang Pag in, in Kalugang, now called Novali. They got their industrial help from Bitcoin regularly. It's, it's a time of typhoons that they could get it. But for a long time, until the late 90s, they were selling exclusively to the Japanese government these binders that would make them all. I don't know if they're still around, but industrial help. Hemp is already here. So there are just two very big points. It's, I think while, while the idea to partner with the NPA is a brilliant idea, I don't think it's the right move at this time. As we all know, the NPA is the number one producer and distributor of marijuana. <laughs> after, so it may not be the right foot. What you can do is... <laughs> what you can do is... get it, You know, how is a raid made in this country? You need a, a warrant, a search warrant. Who issues the warrant? The judges. Connect to the judges. Make this presentation to them. So when they issue the search warrant, they'll make searching questions whether or not the plant is double the height of a man and whether the seeds, if they have samples of this. It could, it could uh, be a shortcut in reaching the enforcement. Get to the judges. Your embassy can help you out do it. Because in that strike, that is legal. Yes, it is yeah. legal. It's predominantly produced in uh, big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, is it on a mass scale? Is it being on a mass scale? It, unfortunately, uh, the big companies that uh, really do the industrial part have closed. So it's there are no big plantations. Mm -hmm. Also, with Milan before. Yeah. So if you go to people, you'll see during the summer strips of hemp being dried in the, on the road. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very common sight of people going to be born. So it's still ongoing. Uh -huh. Did you know that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, as a as, uh, good chairman, uh, as of what we know by fact is regular dealer. So we need to do this thing. Regardless of the uh, varieties of what you're going to produce or you're going to use it for. The point is, M is still listed as illegal. So we need to witness that. Uh, if, if I put the right spirit and uh, uh, form and structure to what we're discussing, 
We want to be careful, uh, as, as our, our, our good CEO uh, has brought up to you, that we are looking for support from you, and part of the support is to be strategic. We don't want to go out of this meeting later on like a shotgun and just tell the whole world and try to meet as many offices. We have been working and meeting with strategic people, and we have scheduled to meet with even more strategic people moving forward to be in the right, as we call it, batas, in the right legal framework, in the right uh, order of the uh, regulatory and eventually legislative as well. So right now we're dealing with the regulatory because we just want to deal with hemp industrial. Yeah. Now, um, I just want to make it clear, no? what is the basis for industrial hemp being legal? Is that, uh, is that it's, I, it's never, it's not been legal, it's legal? Yeah. It's not correct, industrial hemp, yeah. yes. So industrial hemp is basically, uh, it looks like a banana tree. That's money, Yes, that's the that yes. 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 No, 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 it's, it's, it's not cannabis, it's the industrial hair as we know it. Yes. 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 So, if, if I may again break down uh, strategic, uh, part of the support we're asking from you is let's do this carefully, quietly, but sure enough with assertiveness. So, uh, yes, we will meet with you and please help coordinate with us. There might be some offices that we have already met and we already have scheduled to meet. So, we don't need to be loud. We're doing this together in unity, and part of that is being strategic. I hope that is clear. Thank you. Maybe you should add back to your title and the Pacific map. <laughs> well, we'd be happy to do that, and we would very much look forward to a further further conversation and yeah. partnership because uh, we we uh, you know I love what you said, Mr. President, because it, it really is you know how can we get the most amount of social good? Uh, you know, and, and, and that means employment, that means jobs, that means helping real people live better lives. When, 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 when the facts are in your, in your side, when the truth is on your side, yes. then sure you will win out. <laughs> it's a question of time. Right. Because uh, these, uh, these prohibitions are a product of uh, an older generation, yes. and they're passing away. And the younger generation, as it feel that, which we are, you know, <laughs> eventually, eventually they go over. Okay? Okay. Any more questions or comments? Not? Not? Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I think uh, we should please talk into the I think we should just wait for two more years <laughs> after the new administration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do we convince someone who uses fentanyl to <laughs> use uh, <laughs> So it's a great question and I'll try to answer it briefly. Uh, you know, I, I spent a number of years in Canada working at the executive levels in mental health and addiction. I was hitting uh, several large nonprofits. So it's a long answer, but essentially, if you can take a harm reduction approach, which means that you're moving uh, folks from these hard drugs that kill people uh, to lesser drugs that have no indicators of, of death, you know, to our knowledge, no one has ever died from marijuana. Right? Of course, it's the, the more difficult drugs, but that's a long-term uh, sort of a solution where in working with counselors and social workers and mental health professionals, you can move somebody sort of down the continuum in a staged process. And some of these drugs, like fentanyl, have physiological impacts so that that person needs it to live. So you need to um, sort of lower the intensity with the help of medical professionals. And uh, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen many, many times. And it's a lot better to work with somebody who may use too much marijuana than too much fentanyl, right? Vast difference. 
and much cheaper to society as a whole. I think, I think the basic objection on marijuana is it's an entry drug to higher drugs. That's the only thing I can see. Is that it's an entry drug. And one of the things that I was sharing with one of the folks before the meeting is in Canada, the way we've done it, I think it's brilliant, mm -hmm. is at the federal level, we've said, you can, you can use this. But we've allowed individual cities to determine where and when. So for example, in our city, which is called Calgary, I could not go into a public park and smoke marijuana because our city has decided that we don't want children to have exposure to that. And frankly, it doesn't smell that good either, right? Um, and so you can do it in the, in the safety of your own home, but you can't do it in any sort of public place. Uh, there are certain buildings, much like, let's say, Amsterdam, where you're allowed to use it versus other buildings where you're not. So that allows local uh, authorities to still have control of the use, which I think is important. Okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, I think time is on our side. We will see you anyway. I think we'll never see you again. Okay, if nothing else, then I'll ask our vice chairman to uh, make the proper preparations. Uh, uh, to, uh, who is? Please, please uh, put your best uh, smile forward because you're coming out on YouTube. Yeah. I, have a, I have a problem here, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yes to be given to Canada Pacific executives. Yeah. Normally we give just to one person. So I don't know will this be three picture they take right? The Management Association of the Philippines. Uh, are this way for them to stand beside you. Uh, ah, the other problem is, is that they don't have ladies. <laughs> oh, seriously. <laughs>